two questions to start us off. Number one question is, where is your neighborhood? Where is your neighborhood? Maybe your neighborhood is your apartment or condo floor. Maybe it's your townhouse complex. Maybe it's a neighborhood that you actually live in, like just a normal suburban neighborhood. Maybe it's in a more urban context. Where is your neighborhood? Second question, who are the people in your neighborhood? Who are the people in your neighborhood? Here's something I know about every single one of our neighborhoods and the people in those neighborhoods. There are people in your neighborhood, there are people in my neighborhood that need to have a life-altering encounter with Jesus. And that's why I believe God has put us in our particular neighborhoods. God wants you, God wants me to live six, eight in our neighborhoods. He wants us to go in our neighborhoods and he wants us to walk humbly with him in front of our neighbors. He wants us to love mercy and he wants us to act justly in our neighborhoods. And this morning I want to say to you that I believe God wants us to adopt our neighborhoods. I've told you about the story of the Los Angeles Dream Center and how Matthew Barnett, as a young 20-year-old, left his dad's church in Phoenix and came to L.A. with this idea of planting a mega church. Only when he got there, he had a little church building with a little church congregation in the Echo Park area of Los Angeles, which was a horrible area. Gangs, rape, violence, drugs, all that stuff you can imagine in inner city L.A., and yet Matthew Barnett said, I'm just going to go out in my neighborhood. I'm going to serve my neighborhood. And, and he literally went out himself and knocked on doors and said to people, how can I serve you? And, and then one afternoon at lunch, Matthew and, and some of his friends were discussing how could they make a lasting impact in the Echo Park community of Los Angeles. And an idea written on the back of a napkin gave or grew into Los Angeles Dream Center Adopt Your Block Outreach. And the basic idea was this. It started with their little church adopting the blocks around the church, around the Echo Park community. And every Saturday morning, people in the church would go to the blocks that they'd adopt, and they'd find ways to serve people on those blocks. And through Adopt the Block, the needs of individuals and families were met on a consistent basis. And the consistency of the people from that small church being on those blocks every Saturday morning led to relationships being formed. And as relationships were formed and grew stronger, it gave opportunity from the, for the people from that small church to share with their neighbors the good news of Jesus. You see, as we say here at Sandwich, those good deeds of consistently being on that block and doing acts of service led to goodwill, led to relationships, which led to life-altering conversations for people. And here's the thing. After three years of adopting those blocks, crime rate dropped 73% in the Echo Park area of Los Angeles. Isn't that amazing? And now the Los Angeles Dream Center has adopted blocks all over Los Angeles, and they've changed the atmosphere in 15 neighborhoods in L.A. And so one day I was sitting there, and I was thinking about the Dream Center Adopt Your Block program when a thought crossed my mind. Here was the thought. There is no better block to adopt than our own. And what would happen if each of us here at Sandwich Baptist said, I'm going to adopt my block. I'm going to adopt my block. Now, your neighborhood is probably not like the Echo Park community of Los Angeles. Nevertheless, imagine the impact. Imagine what could happen in your neighborhood if you said, I'm going to adopt my block. And that's what I want to challenge us to do this morning. I want to challenge all of us to adopt your block. Whether, whether your block, again, is an apartment floor, a condo floor, it's a townhouse complex, it's a cul-de-sac like where I live, 
I want to challenge you to adopt your block. Now, it's very simple. Adopt your block has four concepts to it. Step one is commit. Step two is observe. Step three is connect. And step four is bless. Let's start with step two. Come back to step one later. Step two is observe. There's a difference between seeing people and actually seeing people. You know what I mean, right? I've told you before, if you see me in a mall, and unless you jump in front of me, don't feel insulted if I don't see you. Oh, I see people, but when I go to a mall, I'm a man on a mission. I want to get in. I want to get out. I'm not a shopper. And so it's just like, I'm like, I have got tunnel vision. And people all say, we were waving at you. You didn't see us. Oh, I may have seen you waving, but I didn't pay. You have to actually call my name and jump in front of me. Because I see people, but I don't really see people. And yet Jesus calls us to really see people. Just like he did. Look at Matthew chapter 10 and verse 36. It says, when he, that's Jesus, saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. When he saw the crowds, you notice that Jesus saw something that his disciples didn't see? Notice, they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. The people were harassed. That that word harassed in the New Testament means to be troubled, worried, confused. Jesus looked at the people, and he saw what others didn't see. He saw that people were troubled and confused and worried. They were helpless. They were like sheep without a shepherd. And while others may have just seen fishermen and farmers and villagers, Jesus saw people who were troubled and confused and lost and weary and full of anxiety and fear. And today, we all know that our world is full of people who are troubled and confused and aimless and stressed out and tired and fearful and anxious. In fact, your neighborhood is full of people who look good on the outside but are dying on the inside. And I wonder what would happen if we asked Jesus to open our eyes so we could really see the people in our neighborhoods like he sees them. And then I wonder what would happen if that happened, if, if Jesus really did open our eyes and, and the people in our neighborhoods suddenly became real people to us. Are you willing to do that? Are, are you willing to ask Jesus to open your eyes so you can really see the people in your neighborhood? Because so often what we do is we jump in our cars, we wave at our neighbor, and we keep going, but we really don't see our neighbors. It's like me in a shopping mall. You notice the people, but you don't really see the people. And let me remind you of something I I shared with you during our series, Baseball and Barbecues, that I think is a great way to start to understand your neighborhood in a whole new way and to really observe what is going on in your neighborhood. And that's to simply take a prayer walk around your neighborhood. Go for a walk in the evening and walk around your neighborhood And pray for your neighborhood. That's what a prayer walk is. It's simply walking and praying. It's not mysterious. It's pretty simple. You go out and you walk around your neighborhood and you pray and you ask Jesus to open your eyes and allow you to see the people and their needs the way he sees them. And so you walk into your neighborhood and you say, Lord, let me see what you see. And then as God answers your prayer, because I believe God will be faithful to answer that prayer, you begin to then observe the people and see their needs. And so here's the second part of prayer walking. Pray for what you observe. So as you go and walk around your block and you say, Jesus, open my eyes so I can see what you see. And then as he does that and he opens your eyes and you start to observe the people and you start to see the needs, then pray for the people and pray for the needs. Can I ask you to pray for a couple other things for your neighborhood as you walk around it? Here's one thing to pray for. Ask God to give you his heart for your neighbors. That'll change your life. Ask God 
to give you his heart for your neighbors. And then secondly, as you walk around your neighborhood, pray that his kingdom will come into your neighborhood. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what would happen if God's kingdom came to earth in your neighborhood? Imagine. Imagine what would happen. Imagine the changes that would take place. Imagine the grace and love that would be poured out. Take a prayer walk. Observe the people and the needs. Step two of adopt your block is observe. Observe the people. Observe the needs in your neighborhood. Here's step three. It's connect. Have you ever noticed that we live in a culture where people have become experts at disconnecting from people right around them? Have you noticed that? It's never been easier to be among people physically and yet remain con- disconnected from them relationally. Have you noticed that? This little tool here is awesome at disconnecting us from the people right around us. Have you noticed? When Sylvia and I, it really stood out for us. We were in Los Angeles a while ago, and we were in downtown L.A. Everybody, in, I mean, I'm literally telling you, everybody in downtown L.A. is doing this as they walk. If there's hundreds of them all on the street, but nobody's connecting with anyone around them because they're all on their phones. This has the power to disconnect us. I'll tell you a funny story. If if you know the inside of Victoria Airport, the secure area after you pass through security, you'll know that uh, there's a washroom there. And you walk into this little hallway. And if you keep going straight, you'll go into the ladies. If you make a left turn, you go into the men's. I come off a flight the other day, and I got to go to the little boys' room. And I'm watching this guy, and he is engrossed on his phone. And he turns, and, he's, and I'm thinking, I should tell him he's heading for the women's washroom. But I think, no, I'm going to watch how this plays out. <laughs> sure enough, he goes like this. He turns the corner into the ladies' washroom. You see him stop dead. His eyes get big. He goes, ah, and turns around and runs out. You see, we get so engrossed with these things that we disconnect from the people right around us. Listen, Jesus doesn't want us to live like that. Jesus doesn't want us to be disconnected from the people that live right around us. Rather, Jesus wants us to connect with people like he did. Listen, I love this verse, Eugene Peterson, John 1, 14. I've shared it with you before, but I just love this verse. The word, that's Jesus, became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. We saw the glory of, with our own eyes, a -a one-of-a-kind glory like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. Not only did Jesus become flesh and blood and move into the neighborhood, but while he was on earth, which is absolutely incredible and amazing, by the way. While he was on earth, while he was living in the neighborhood, do you notice what he did? He connected with people in their neighborhood, in their villages. Jesus hung out with people who didn't know him. He was involved in their lives. He went to their parties. He ate in their homes. He engaged people. He connected with them. And guess what? Jesus wants us to follow his example. Jesus wants us to stop wandering around looking at our phones like no one else exists. He wants us to look up and be present and actually connect with the people right around us. He wants us to go hang out with people that are far from him. He wants us to go to their parties, eat in their homes, and then invite them into our homes. That's what Adopt Your Block is all about. It's connecting with people in your neighborhood. Let me ask you some questions this morning. How well do you connect with the people in your neighborhood? Here's three questions. Maybe it'll help you define that. How many neighbors have entered your home this past month? How many meals have you shared with your neighbors this past month? How many five-minute longer conversations have you had with your neighbors in this past month? Let me say again, Jesus wants us to connect with the people right around us. Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. What if we took that command literally? 
And you may say, but how do I do that? How do I connect with my neighbors? Well, let me get real practical. And this, this first idea, again, I shared with during baseball and barbecues. You may have heard it before. A number of you did it. It was a great, it, it's been a great success for people that have done it. And here it is. The first way to connect with your neighbors is throw a party. As Christ followers, we should throw some of the best parties in our neighborhoods. We, as Christ followers, should see partying as a ministry. Because there's so many good things that come out of a good party. Let me give you some. Parties give us the opportunity to get to know our neighbors and for them to get to know us and each other. They give us the opportunity to increase our sense of community in our neighborhood. Neighborhood parties create environments where relationships can develop and gives us the opportunity to see the needs in our neighborhood. Parties give us an opportunity to have fun, which some of you need to learn how to do. Parties give us the opportunity to speak about Jesus. And parties give people the opportunity to speak about Jesus and his followers differently because Christians have a reputation and it is not a partying reputation. Anything but. And when we throw parties, it breaks the ice. Here, here's the deal. You, you know, Matthew 5, Jesus calls us to be salt and light. And one of the attributes of salt is what? It adds flavor. So how about adding some flavor to your neighborhood by throwing some great parties? Plan a neighborhood barbecue. We're sending out invitations this week to our big July 1 neighborhood barbecue that we do every year. It's great. We all think it's going to end by 8 and by 12 Midnight, we're thinking we should shut this thing down before somebody else comes and shuts it down for us. People love to hang out. Throw a barbecue. Enjoy being with your neighbors. Throw a party. Here's some other ways you can connect real quick. Ways you can connect in your neighbor. Invite your neighbors over for dinner. People love to connect over food. That's why Jesus in the Gospels time and time again was eating with people. Follow his example. Have meals with your neighbors. Celebrate special events, birthdays, anniversaries. Everyone loves to be celebrated. If you're into cooking, cookie exchanges. A party on Halloween, a neighborhood garage sale. Kid playtimes in the park. Walk over to your neighbor, say hi, and start a conversation. Play road hockey in your neighborhood. We live in a cul-de-sac. And when our kids were growing up, we used to have everybody in there. We were playing road hockey all the time. What a great way to connect in your neighborhood. Serve your neighbors together. Cultivate a front yard community. We all live in our houses or our backyards where we can't connect anyone. Start hanging out in your front yard where you can connect with people. Now, as you connect with your neighbors, please, 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 please remember this. Your neighbors are not your religious projects or targets. All right? We don't love people to convert them. We love people because Jesus said, go love people whether or not they take any steps towards them or not. Your neighbors need to know you will be their friends whether they accept Jesus or not. And can I give you one more idea that I personally found really important? Commit to living in your neighborhood for the long haul. There's no better way to connect with your neighbors than to live with your, in your neighborhood for the long haul. As you know, I'm an empty nester now. My wife and I are empty nesters. It would be easy for us to move out of our neighborhood. This is our neighborhood, our little cul-de-sac. And it would be easy for us to move out of the West Shore, move over to Royal Oak area. Still works at Prospect Lake School. I work here. And we've discussed that. But still really likes living where she lives. And as we've discussed it, we said, no, we're committed to living in our neighborhood for the sake of our neighbors. Because when you commit to living in your neighborhood for the long haul, you build relationships for the long haul. And I can honestly say we love some of our neighbors. They don't know Jesus, but we love them. We have deep relationship with them. And if you want to connect with your neighbors, let me encourage you to make a decision to live in your neighborhood for the long haul. 
Step three of adopt your block is connect. Step four is bless. Observe, connect, bless. Jesus came to bless and serve others. Look at math, Mark 10, 45. Even the Son of Man didn't come to be saved, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Like Jesus, we need to serve and bless others. After all, we're blessed to? Thank you. Be a blessing. And one of the primary places we as Christ followers are called to be a blessing is in our neighborhoods. So let me ask you, how can you serve or bless the family across the road who are sick? The elderly neighbors with the long grass. The neighbor who's just been diagnosed with cancer. That marriage you know about that's struggling. The the neighbor who is going on vacation. How can you serve and bless them? Real quick this morning, let me give you some ways that you can bless the people in your neighborhood. Number one is you can bless people by giving. You can give your money. You can give your possessions. You can loan them or you can give them to your neighbor. You can give your time. Sometimes people don't actually need stuff or money. They just need you. I remember when one of our neighbors had one of their sons diagnosed with a brain tumor. And they'd wander over to our house And they just want to talk. And they just want us to listen. And that was the gift we could give them. There is nothing we could do for their son, but we could do something for them. Just be present. Just be a good neighbor. Sometimes the gift that people really want is the gift of your time. We can also bless our neighbors by serving them. Maybe you've got an elderly neighbor who can't get the trash can out to the curb and, and, and you say, I'll do that. There's a billion ways we can serve in our neighborhood. We just have to open our eyes and see them. We, we can bless others by opening our homes. What if your home became the safe home in the neighborhood? The home that if a child was having a problem, they could go to. The home that if the neighbor was having a problem, they could come to. The, your home was known as the safe home. Can I encourage you to sit down with your spouse or your family or your roommate or if you live alone just by yourself and make a list of the ways that you could use your home as a blessing in your neighborhood. We we can bless our neighbors through our connections. We, We might not always be able to personally meet a need, but sometimes we know someone else who can. I had a neighbor recently that needed a family doctor, and I knew a family doctor, and I put the two together. Maybe that's a way you can bless in your neighborhood. You can bless your neighbors by the words you speak to them. It's so easy to underestimate the power of a positive word. Most people today hear negative words, not positive words. And what if you made a commitment that in your neighborhood, you were going to be the person that spoke blessing over your neighbors? And we can bless our neighbors by sharing our story with them. Jesus wants you to simply share your story of your journey with him with others. And this is where we all get nervous. And we think, we got to speak about Jesus. And so we get all our four spiritual laws and we get all that stuff out. That's not what Jesus necessarily wants you to do. People want to hear your journey. People want to hear your story. People love to hear other people's stories. Speak about Jesus like you speak about other things. The reason speaking about Jesus freaks people out is because we make too big of a deal about it. We just need to talk about Jesus like we talk about our family. Bring it into everyday conversation. You don't have to unload on somebody. You need to share your story with them. And then let Jesus do something in their life. Can can I encourage you to see blessing others in your neighborhood as one of your key ministries. As we wrap up here, I want to challenge us to make a bit of a paradigm shift in our thinking. Most of us think, this is the way most of us think, and it's just the way we think. We think, if I, I live in my neighborhood because it's a nice place for me and my family to live. Most of us would say that. I live in my neighborhood because it's a nice place for me and my family to live. But you notice where the focus is there? Me and my. The focus is on me. The focus is on my family. What if we shifted our thinking and we started to think this way? 
Jesus has placed me and my family in my neighborhood for a reason. In fact, what if we started to think, I live in my neighborhood for the sake of others? What, what, what would that do? If you start to think, I live in my neighborhood for the sake of others. You see, Jesus wants to bring life to your neighbors, and he wants to do it through you. He wants you to adopt your block. He wants you to start observing the people and the needs in your block. He wants you to start connecting with the people on your block. He wants to use you to bless the people on your block. And as that happens, he's going to move. Are you willing to do that? Because that all leads us to step one, which is commit. And today I'm calling you to officially commit to adopting your block. I'm I'm calling you to make a commitment that says, yes, I'm going to observe. Yes, I'm going to connect. Yes, I'm going to bless. Because our dream is that hundreds of us will adopt our blocks and that this would be the beginning of a great move of Jesus in our neighborhoods. Adopt Your Block is going to be a major focus for us over this next ministry year and beyond. In the fall, we're creating the Victoria Dream Center website. Adopt Your Block is going to be part of that. It's going to be a place where you can share ideas and stories and resources. We want to have an annual celebration for those that have adopted their block so we can celebrate what Jesus is doing because we really believe that as we adopt our blocks and we go on our blocks and we take prayer walks around our blocks and as we start to connect with our neighbors on our blocks and we start to be moved by the Holy Spirit to bless those neighbors, that Jesus is going to move in great ways all over this city. And so, my question is, will you make a commitment to adopt your block? 